OK, this question was from exercise 9b, and it's question 8. The difficulty of this question is we have two things that are moving. We have a motorcyclist and we have a car. But for the benefit of those of you who have not read this question, we are going to still look at this one together. It says a motorcyclist M leaves a road junction at time t equals 0. In other words, at the beginning, a motorcyclist is at a road junction. She accelerates from rest at a rate of 3 metres per second squared for 8 seconds and then maintains the velocity she has reached. I'm actually just going to pause for a second. I think we've got enough information to begin drawing what the motorcyclist's journey looks like on a velocity time graph, OK? Because otherwise, sometimes when we have too much information, it just gets really, really confusing. So she leaves a road junction at time t equals 0, and she accelerates from rest. So we know it's going to start down here at rest at a rate of 3 metres per second squared for 8 seconds. That means every second her speed is getting faster by 3. So after 8 seconds, her speed will have gone all the way up to 24, OK? So that's 24, and that's 8. We then get told that that speed is maintained. I'm just going to draw that line like this for now, because I don't know how long it's being maintained for. Now let's go to the second bit. It then says, a car leaves the same road junction as m at time t equals 0. So they're starting at the same place at the same time. That's important. The car accelerates from rest to 30 metres per second in 20 seconds. So it's going to take a lot longer, but it's going to go a bit faster. And it's going to get all the way up to 30 in 20 seconds and then maintains the velocity of 30 metres per second. I don't know how long that red line is going to be, but I know it's going to be some length. This is the next important part. C passes M as they both pass a pedestrian. So just visualise what that is. They started at the traffic lights together. They've been driving separately from each other for a while. Some point later on, the motorcycle and the car are both next to the pedestrian. That must mean, at the same time, they are in the same place. They started at the same time in the same place, and they are now at the same time in the same place. In other words, they have travelled the same distance as each other. Good, in the same time period. That's the hidden meaning of this question. They've travelled the same distance in the same amount of time. What is the property of these graphs that is the same distance? What does, what's the property of the graph that's distance? Area. area. So the area underneath the red and the area underneath the blue must be equal to each other when they pass the pedestrian, which is the thing that I'm going to be interested in. Now, I don't know if this red line has to go on a lot longer or not at all, but all I know is that when I'm at the same time, I need the area underneath the red and the area underneath the blue to be equal to each other. So I could make them longer, but actually here seems like a pretty all right place to stop because you could see how these areas could be equal to each other. This little extra blue bit that's on the top of the red part here, that could be equal to the area of this bit. Maybe it's not. Maybe we would need to move it a bit to the left, a bit to the right. But algebra will sort that out for us. OK. Now let's actually read the question. On the same diagram, sketch velocity time graphs to illustrate the motion of m and c. I suppose there's one improvement I might do here. So I might say this is m, and I might say that this is c. Otherwise, I'm pretty happy with how that one looks. OK, I'm pretty happy with how that one looks. The last thing that we need to do, though, is the hardest part of the question. And it says, find the distance of the pedestrian from the road junction. Well, we know this bit where I've drawn the black line, that's when, when they got to the pedestrian. This is when they got to the junction. So I'm actually just going to say this was the road junction. And this time here was when they got to the pedestrian. Just make this arrow a little bit smaller because I'm going to need that in a second. This is when they got to the pedestrian. Now, I can't find out what that distance is because I don't know how long 
it was traveling for. So you have to use the properties that you haven't yet used. The thing that we haven't yet used is that they travel the same distance as each other. So if I name this time, and I call that that period of time there is t, I can try and find out the area underneath the red one and the area underneath the blue one. And what can you tell me about their areas? They have to be equal to each other. Because of this thing I've written in purple, they must have traveled the same distance. So I'm just going to write that down. The area under C is equal to the area under M. That should help me find out how long it took. Then I can find out the distance that it traveled. So time is in like the kind of background here. Now, the area of M, I need to find out what some of these distances are. If this is 8 and this whole thing is T, what is this distance along the top? Good, it's T, but I've taken 8 away from it. So it's T minus 8. And then for the red one, I'm trying to find out what this distance is. The whole thing is T, but I'm reducing it by 20. So this distance here is T minus 20. I'm going to work out the area under C, first of all, which is my red one. The shape that you should see here is a trapezium. So you're going to have a half. You're going to find the average of the parallel sides. The length of this top bit is t minus 20. What's the length of the bottom of the red trapezium? t. We've named it t. So it's just t along the bottom. And then I'm going to multiply that by its height, which we can see is 30. That should be equal to the area underneath m. So it's going to be the average of this top bit, which is t minus 8. This bottom bit, which we have named, we gave it the name t, which is t. So we're going to find the average of those. That's our half of a plus b. And we're going to multiply that by its height, which is 24. You can now see that we've got an equation that is in t. That will tell us what t is. We can then use that to find out what the distance is. So I'm just going to go to um, the black pen now to finish solving this. So I've got my half times 30, so that's 15. And then I've got 2t minus 20 is equal to a half times 24, which is 12, 2t minus 8. To solve this equation, we're just going to expand. So I have 30t minus 300 equals 24t minus 96. So subtracting 24t, I get 6t. Adding 300, I get 204. When I do 204 divided by 6, I get 34. So I now know this time that I had over here is actually 34 seconds. We've actually worked that out. The question didn't tell us to work that out, but that was the only thing that we could do. Now I know that it's 34 seconds, I could find out the area under one of them. Area under C or, R, or, or M, sorry. It would just be a half. 34, I don't know why I'm using that one. I should probably just use this one here. Let's just use that one instead. It's going to be 15, 2 times 34, minus 20. So that's 15 of 68 minus 20. 15 times 48, which is, I want to double check we've got that right. I think it's 720. Is that what you got? Yeah. 15 times 48, 720 meters. If I put that value of t inside this, what shall I get? I better get 720, otherwise it's just not making any sense. Stop doing that thing where you're packing away because I need to tell you about what your homework is. I know you can hear people outside leaving their lessons. We are not leaving the lesson. Please stop, OK? This is a tricky kind of question that you have here. There's a lot of logic and reasoning and not common sense, but like logical reasoning that comes up here. You have to read each sentence and think, is this important or is this not important? And they're definitely mentioning this pedestrian for a reason. So you need to start questioning yourself about that. A few people got stuck on this question because they didn't do anything to do with the areas. Didn't I tell you? Nine out of ten questions, probably even higher. If you're drawing a speed time graph, you're finding the area underneath it. So what your homework is going to be is to do the odd questions from that exercise, as well as the next exam question that is in here. OK, so you're going to do the exam question that's the next question that's in here. We will start off the next lesson doing the one after that, OK? So I will put that all on the Padlet, and I will put it all on um, YouTube and your homework on there as well, OK?